Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited today to be able to show you the first look at our The Grange library. I'm going to try and keep this walkthrough uh, short and sweet and focus more in on the sounds, but I just have to give you a very quick intro to this library. We were massively excited to be able to go back to Headley Grange, where in the early 70s, a number of very uh, distinguished British bands, Bad Company, Fleetwood Mac, Genesis, and of course um, Led Zeppelin, uh, recorded their albums. In the mid 70s, the family closed the doors to uh, the, the kind of marauding rock bands, and it was 40 years to pass before uh, the next recordings would, would take place there, which was by their very kind invitation. We uh, turned up mob handed with two inch tape, uh, with reams of vintage microphones, with a broadcast um, mobile truck, caterers, and three incredible drummers. Um, true legends Roger Taylor from Queen Chad Smith from Red Hot Chili Peppers and Andy Gangadine the incredible dance crossover drummer whose sound you will know from Massive Attack's Mezzanine album uh, Chase and Status more recently and a wide variety of other uh, huge dance hits so I'm going to just leap straight in um, we've got a couple of other videos to give you much more background and information and uh, you'll be able to see some of the parts of the sessions and things online. But for now, I'm gonna concentrate on the library. And we're gonna leap in um, in the mapped kits sections. There are four instrument folders you'll see here. Easy tweak versions of the patches, kit mics versions, mixes versions, and the stereos versions. We're in the mixes sections, we're in the mapped kits. These mixes have been created by our recording and mix engineer, Nick Taylor, who has done just an incredible job on making these um, kits sound fabulous. So I'm gonna show you the three different mixes in this section, the tight, the mid, and the epic sound. So let's just jump straight in, and excuses um, up front for my uh, very poor <laughs> keyboard drumming skills, but here we go. So you get the idea. I'll just quickly run through some of the sounds. So there's a ton of stuff in here, really incredible sounding stuff. Let's just flip quickly to the mid. The mid. These are different blends of positions within the um, within the room. So the tight section is more focused in on the actual very uh, the close mics and the very closer overhead. The mid is um, is kind of expanding that perspective out slightly, and the epic uses the very, very high up mics two floors up. So, so here is the mid perspective. And then if we jump to the epic perspective, that sounds like this. So you can hear on the toms there, and then on those, you're getting a real fantastic slappy boomy sound. Um, still kind of bizarrely tight, but um, still root, very roomy sounding in, at the same time. So while we're in um, kit mode, let's flip through straight through to Chad's kit. Now I'll do the same three versions. So here is the tight version. So you get the idea, um, we've got these uh, great individual sounds. And again, some nice tight um, closed cymbals at the top of those ranges. So there's a lot of great stuff in there. Um, and, I, and the kit, as, as you would expect, actually sounds very different from Roger's kit. Um, let's jump into the medium perspective. And 
And then if we look at the epic perspective, And what you can do here is you can really mix it up. Um, so you can go mainly tight and have a little bit of the epic in the background. So just, you can get an enormously punchy sound. Let's just switch that for the mid. So you get the idea. Um, peaking slightly there, <laughs> sorry, got a bit enthusiastic. Um, let's go, let's jump into Andy's brushes kit. So in the, um, you'll see that the, the mic mixes for Andy's kit are slightly different. And these are, um, th this is to reflect the slightly different stylistic aim of this kit, but it's also, um, the, the naming is slightly different. So it's super tight, tight and mid. So let's just check those out. So again, this is the brushes. Um, and this is the super tight. And then if we switch to the tight. So you've got um, slightly slapped, yeah, looser one there. Some shakery stuff, which is quite cool. Brushy rides and toms. You can hear it's very, very dynamic. Let's go to the mid. It sounds like this. Um, and then if we switch to the sticks kit, so you've got a kind of closer point of comparison. Again, with the super tight. So you've got that in here, uh, all kinds of stuff in here. Some nice cowbell. And then up here, more of the kind of stuff that we've got on the other kits. So um, there's a lot of variation in there. Now, before I jump into the loop sections, um, I'm just going to go through the actual layout of these individual parts. So if we, let's say that um, you wanted to mix the actual kit yourself. So I'm going to load up uh, Chad's Snare 2 kit. And then you'll see that we've, we've here, we've got um, different kind of volume sliders for the kick, mics, snare, hi-hat and toms. So at the moment, if I play uh, stuff, you can hear only what is recorded through the snare mic, but, but on each individual kit part. So if I then play the snare, you can hear that's nice and clear. Um, if I switch that off and go to the kick mic, we hear the kick nice and clearly. And again with hi-hat, let's switch the whole thing on. Um, so just plain vanilla, we get this kind of effect. So you'll notice there's no overhead sound here. Now, these are the, these are the close kit mics. Um, so you've got in there. You can hear all that stuff. But obviously the hi-hat and the cymbals sound, still sound slightly muted. So what we would do then, so this is for your overall mix everything version. So we would go into the uh, stereos. Now in the stereos, let's load up the same kit and you'll see what we've got here. So you'll see the, these are all kind of stereo pairs created from the different perspectives of overheads uh, in different positions in the room. So I'm gonna just go through um, so you can hear them. So this is a mid um, overhead sound. 
that's a closer overhead sound. That's a roomier overhead sound. <laughs> Straight overheads. And then our kind of uh, stairwell type <laughs> sound. So between those, all of those different overhead sounds, you've got um, a very clear and easy uh, way to, to mix all this stuff. So if I just, I'll just pull that back. So I've selected just the straight overheads and I'm gonna go back into the uh, kit mic section, load up the same kit, and then I'm gonna open that one out and I'm gonna go for uh, just the straight all mics up. I'm not gonna change the levels of any of these yet. So what you're listening to now, if we look at these two patches, we've got both patches loaded up, I'll just put them on the same MIDI channel. Um, and then we've got the straight overheads and the close mics for everything. And that sounds like this. So you've got that full bandwidth sound, but if you decide you want a, a slightly lighter, uh, harder snare, a slightly lighter kick, and you want to pull the tom, maybe let's boost the toms really heavy, so. You hear immediately the change in sound and basically you just tweak, you know, if we want full on kick, we don't want quite such a punchy snare, we want to leave the toms up. So you can hear that between all of these different um, mix opportunities, let's put in the stairwell just for fun. So we know we've still got all of this uh, tight stuff. Just pull the toms down a bit. Let's pull the hi-hat down. So now we're listening to two sets of overheads and the close mics. Yeah, you get the idea. It's, it's really, really creatively inspiring. You can get a, literally any sound up. And the beauty of this library is that the drums spring out of the box because <laughs> these are not only the best players in their field in the world, but these are the their drum techs are incredible. They, um, the you know, it's a performance and a sound that's been honed over many many years. We've got the best mics. We've got the whole thing beautifully recorded, to two inch and mixed fabulously by Nick. So you've just got an amazing sound, just leaps out the box. We've planned very carefully how all of these different sections of the library will interlink so that you get maximum controllability. So let's just unload these two sections and jump back out again. And let's, uh, so, so we've looked at then the kit mics being the individual close mics on kit parts, kick, snare, hi-hat, toms your mixes being your three perspectives per kit. So if you want a pre-mixed kit, but you just want to be able to control how kind of tight or boomy, you know, roomy it is, that's a great alternative approach, a macro approach. And we've got our instrument stereos here, which is all of the different varieties of, of overhead or room mics, if you like, presented as stereos. So what's easy tweak? Well, let's go in. We'll get to the loops in just a second. Let's load Dr. Rogers' kit. So you'll see that there are four different sliders here. Now, T is a sound that we'll recognize from before. This is the tight mix, so that you'll recognize from where we had the three perspectives. But now we have straightforward uh, mixes created from the three different optional levels within the room. The ground level, uh, so that's the roomier ground overhead sound then you've got the first floor and the second floor. So the easiest way to explain this is simply to play a very straightforward beat, which obviously is all I'm capable of with the, my slightly ham-fisted approach. But this is what the tight kit sounds like, just to remind you. Um, and by the way, another important element of the performance kit is when, when you hit the hi-hat hard, you get Roger's trademark sound of, of when he hits the snare and the hi-hat together, he opens the hi-hat slightly. Um, so that's that's the kind of another element of the performance hi-hat. Sorry, just remembered that and wanted to share that with you. So here's the tight sound. And then if we go to the ground perspective, then if we go to the first floor perspective, 
and then we go to the second floor perspective. So that, as you can hear in there, that's a key um, way to kind of get your different perspectives lined up. So if you want to have a nice punch from the tight sound, but you want the increasing perspective, the increasing level from the mics as you go up into the uh, into the higher parts of the room, you get this kind of sound. So as you can hear, the, the, this is like having um, a multi-track drum performance. And in fact, of course, you can output these to separate outputs within contact. So you can create a multi-track, um, you know, with your, uh, from your MIDI performance, which you can then give to your mix guy, if, you know, if you want to output that kind of detail. But you can hear that it's all about, it's all about um, the space. Um, probably saying something that sounds obvious, but with the great, to get a great drum recording, you're going to be picking, you're going to be um, taking your uh, tight sound as a kind of basis or your close mic sound as a basis, but the vast kind of bulk of the vibe of the sound comes from the room sound and that, that'll be a combination of kind of the overheads with their, with their combination of direct sound from the kit and, you know, the obviously important elements like the symbols and stuff like that but also they they get a certain amount of um you know reflection back into them and then but then as you progressively put your mics further away from the kit you're picking up um much more room sound compared to the direct sound so it's all about getting that blend um to taste and this is very very controllable to get a really very different kind of sound and it, it's kind of fun sometimes to program in a beat and then just to sit moving the faders and see what happens. And, you know, you can you can dial in a sound really um, nicely that way. So I've explained what the four different sections of the library are. I'm going to go back into the mixes section and we're going to have a look at the loops. And we're going to start, let's go in reverse order this time. Now, the loop browser looks like uh, this, a, a view that you'll recognize from our Iceni library. And each section is presented. So within loop one, which is which are all based at 80 BPM, you've got a whole load of different stuff here. So if we go through. Oh, and also you've got the, the different mixes. So I'll go to the super tight. So you can hear that you've got a ton of stuff on, on all of those keys, but then as we go through, we've got some 90 BPM stuff. And I could go on, there's a ton of stuff. And it goes on and on. There's some really wonderful stuff in here. Um, just to very quickly look at the couple of other sections, the brush brush loop section. So you get the idea, there are loads and loads of loops in here. <laughs> I mean, a lot of loops. Uh, let's go back to the super time. Uh, 
and obviously all of this stuff will sync to tempo uh, you can set your your sequence of tempo and then just click that button and it will beautifully sync uh, you've got shaker loops there's side stick stuff simple uh, load up simple lot of stuff in here um, there's a there's a quite a lot of stuff in here that is um, a lot of straightforward loops that you can use for making breakbeats so um, as an example so let's um let's jump out so we're Chad we're going back back to front on this run through um, let's go back to the super and let's jump in with the first one so lots and lots of stuff in here Just incredible stuff. And they vary in all kinds of different kind of levels of complexity with fills, without fills, with with symbols, without. <laughs> So you get the idea, there's a ton of stuff in here. Real treasure trove, um, huge, huge quantities of just secret sauce. Let's look at Roger's stuff. So, tons, I can't stop playing. A 
And again, if you want to bring up... And if we put the epic sound in as well... So all of this stuff, we could go into the Easy Tweak section, for example, load up um, another patch here, and then go in this way with our tight and our three different types of overhead stuff. Uh, so if we add in, that's the top one, but if we can look at the closer overheads, just widens out that sound slightly. And for everything loaded up. So you've got a, a really great uh, bunch. And then again, you can kind of just pick one of those. So you get the idea. It's a real treasure trove um, and lots of tweakability in there. So that's a very quick overview of the Grange library. Um, there's going to be more stuff that we'll want to look at. So we'll do some more walkthroughs, just trying to keep this one as a, at a kind of um, watchable length without having to take up hours of your time. If we look into the um, kits, you'll obviously see that uh, part of the uh, way that it loads up, it loads up with this. You can obviously switch that off by saying, please, don't show this bubble again, but um, this tells you a little bit about what you're looking at and also gives you the kind of help menu that's built into the UI. Very, very clever stuff from Blake here. So as you, um, you can kind of pick things, it'll tell you, okay, this is how you use this. Um, you've got all the different options. You can change things via MIDI. Um, there's a huge amount of tweakability here. You can build it to fit the exact way that you want your, your system set up whether that's a, an e-drum system that you want to be able to play this uh, these kits with your e-drum kit, or whether you want to be able to load it up onto a keyboard in a slightly different way, get the sounds that you really use the most in, in your favorite layout. Everything is possible, ultimate tweakability. And then you combine that with all of the controls here. Check out the manual on our knowledge database, which is um, it's uh, spitfireaudio.com slash bb which is our bulletin board, The Knowledge, and that has all of our manuals on there. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick walkthrough um, of the Grange Library. It's really been an amazing experience and journey for us here at Spitfire, a real once in a lifetime um, experience. I mean, my five-year-old self sitting with his uh, little record deck and um, kiddie record deck and his copy of, of Queen's We Are The Champions, the seven inch, would never have guessed that one day I would be pushing the talk back um, to speak to Roger Taylor. Massive thrill for me, I know for Christian as well, for everyone in the Spitfire team to be working with these incredible players. And uh, we're just very excited about this library and to bring it to you. Um, and we look forward to hearing what you, what you guys do with it. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.